have I got a fun card for you. It's gonna be a pop-up and pivot card. But what kind of supplies are we gonna use? Well, I did a little shopping expedition at the Stamp and Scrapbook Expo last weekend. And I got some fabulous finds and I got my order in from scrapbook.com and we're gonna use some of it today. So I can't wait to show you. Let's get crafting. I found these two cute cover dies from Tall Mouse. This one looks just like chain link fence. It is too cute. And this is a really cute crisscross lattice. $9 each, not too shabby. Then I headed over to Sassy Club and found Figment. Y'all know I love Figment. And this stamp set is super cute. I cannot wait to use it. I kind of went a little wild at Scrappy Boy Stamps. And I got this Steampunk Fairies, which is absolutely adorable. I really went for the dies because I already had the stamps, but it was on a show special and I actually got both pieces for less money. This one is called Witches and Wizards. That's the die set. I already had the stamps. The Land of Oz, again, I had the stamps, so I just picked up the dies. Here's the stamp set for Witches and Wizards, which I already had in my stash. When I saw this one, I just had to have it. It's called Tinkering Around, and the sentiments are really what made me want this. Uh, you make my gear spin, we're all geared up to celebrate. I knew that this was gonna go really well with a brand new Sizzix set. And of course, this is why I went there. Thank you for being a friend, based on the Golden Girls, of course, and the sentiments are fantastic. It's a great scent, I cannot wait to use it. Switching gears, this is my scrapbook.com haul and my newest Viggy Booten uh, stencils. This one is called Tranquil Stencils and it's beautiful. Uh, I can't wait to use those daisies on the front. It's absolutely lovely. The next one up is Art Layers Stencils. And this is one's really all about texture. Uh, I love that there's three, actually four different textures on this one. And then on the back, Think about all the cool things you can do with that. And finally, oh yes, you can use all of her packaging. It's fantastic, I use it for card friends. This last one is called World Traveler. And these globes and these cool dots on the back and this scripty writing texture stencil was really cool. But the globes are what got me because that's gonna go with one of the new Tim Holtz die sets. I picked up Vault Boutique, and this is the one that we're gonna to use today. I loved the doily. I saw so much potential here, but uh, this is absolutely a beautiful set. Next up, I got Vault Matchbox, which actually makes a three-dimensional opening matchbox. This beautiful set is Vault Watch Gears. Love the numbers in here, as well as those gears. Picture show. Fantastic die set, can't wait to use it. This is Vault World Traveler with a fantastic uh, retro kind of alphabet and number set. So I really thought that was gonna go with the Vicky Booten stencil set really, really well. And I forgot to show you, I don't know how I forgot. This is by Sweet Sentiment Stamps. I picked this up at the expo and it's a layering stencil that so reminded me of Spirograph that I just had to have it. And it makes phenomenal backgrounds. I can't wait to show you what I did with it. And last but certainly not least, I picked up a new lunar paste for me. This one's called Silver Lining. I love the shine of that stuff. And I got some Lindy's Magical Shakers. This one is Pinkies Up Pink. And this one is Have a Scone Heather. And I cannot wait to play with those. I have been so looking forward to that. It's a great mini haul. I hope you agree. Let me know in the comments below if you spotted something that you would love to see me make a card out of. In the meantime, I promised you a pop-up and pivot card using some of these new products, and we're gonna use the Vault Boutique die set. So let's get to it. So I'm pairing up this beautiful die set with purple rose, or paper rose, purple haze, I'll get it right, uh, paper pack. This is a six by six paper pack, and I thought the beautiful purples would go well. So this card needs three 
initial pieces and I'm using a scoreboard. I've already pre-cut my cardstock. Now this is a fairly heavy accent opaque piece of card that is four and a quarter by 11 and we're going to score that at five and a half. Make sure that your edges are very even for this card and that you really burnish down your edges. Um, I'm using a bold folder. You don't have one. You can certainly use like a butter knife. Uh, this is two by four inches and I'm going to score this at every inch. So at one inch, two inch and three inches. And the last little piece is one inch by two inches and you're going to score that at the one inch mark. That's it. Everything else is considered embellishment. I'm going to take the time to really use my bone folder and burnish down those scored edges. The small pieces, I am using Recollections brand 65 pound weight cardstock. I wanted these to be a lighter weight so they don't um, pop up too much. I know that sounds crazy, but when you see it, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Now you can use any shape that you want. I'm going to use circles. So I've dug out my infinity die set of circles and I'm going to pair that up with the doily part of the vault boutique uh, die set. I did decide to mat this particular card. So out of that pack, pack of paper, I've chosen that beautiful like watery color look. And I'm going to go ahead and use some backgrounds. This is a great idea to use up some of your backgrounds for your die cuts. I wanted something with some contrast. And at first I was kind of thinking something rather bright. Uh, mm, nope, didn't work for me. That actually is what I end up using, but that's not what I cut out at first. I actually thought I'd use a blue one and well, that one didn't quite work out so well. And it's pretty, but it wasn't what I wanted because it was on photo paper and photo paper is a little harder to die cut. The other one, the yellow and purple one, that die cut beautifully because it was on regular cardstock. Now, if you have lots of little bits in your die cut, use a foam mat. This is just a, a thick foam mat and this is my scrapbook, uh, not my scrapbook, spell binders, tool in one. And I'm just rubbing the brush part over the back side of my die cut and look at how all the little pieces are just falling out of it. it comes out so easily. With my doily ready to go, I need to pick a circle that will go over the die cut. I need an opening large enough that that can pop up out of it. So I'm using a Hero Arts Infinity Circle dies and I'm just grabbing out a whole stack and trying to figure out which one's gonna work. It needs to be a little larger than your die cut. Again, it can be any shape you want. My doily's circular, so that's why I went with circles. And I think that's our winner. Yep, that's our winner. I'm gonna go ahead and get our background glued down and go ahead and cut that out. Quick tip for this one, make sure that you open up your cardstock, your base, all the way because you don't want to die cut through both the front and the back of your base layer. Just the front layer needs to be cut. If you're going to put a matting layer on the inside of your card, now's the time. Let's build the mechanism now. Using the two inch by four inch piece, I have folded it in half. The fold is closest to my body. Um, I'm just going to put some double sided tape on the top edge and I'm going to go ahead and peel that off. This is scrapbook.com half inch double sided tape. And I did use a pencil to kind of mark the center so I knew where to replace that. Give it a quick little push down. And now closing the top, I'm just going to use a very light pencil line so that I don't put glue down where the opening is. So I have switched to a quarter inch size tape. Sorry about that. I have a cat, so sometimes her hair gets on things. Uh, and this is easy enough to tear apart without having to use scissors. Just a tip, if you have a little extra, just fold it back over. Don't get the scissors out and all that jazz. No need. 
Fold the top of your card down, give it a little burnish, and well, the mechanism's done. Let's do the second part, which is the part that's going to make it pivot. Now this one is the one by two. Once again, I'm looking for a center, and then I realize mm, once I put glue on that, it's gonna make everything stick to the doily. So I'm gonna go back to my original piece and I'm gonna cut out a smaller circle just so that that's what's going to be on the mechanism. Now I'm adding uh, some Barely Arts Precision Craft Glue to the front or colored side of my circle. And then I'm going to go ahead and put that face down onto the back of my doily so the color will be facing outward. And since I don't have three hands or three arms, I'm gonna use a block to hold that down. Now let's get to the pivot part of our mechanism. The fold is still gonna to be towards your body. And I did forget to mention that you don't wanna be smack up against the score line. Um, because if you are, then you're not gonna be able to close your card properly. So good just slightly below your score lines. With the front of your card closed, you're gonna go ahead and attach your pivot mechanism to the pop-up mechanism. And just below the score line, go ahead and give it a good burnish and erase any pencil lines you may have still showing. Now it's time to add whatever embellishment, in this case, my doily, to the front of my card. So, Take this moment of opportunity before you glue it down to make sure that it is lining up exactly where you want it inside of your opening. I'm gonna use the rose die from the vault bouquet set and I've cut out two cream color roses and one in purple. Now, when you take the die off of the cardstock, be gentle with it. There will still be a small part that seems to be attached. It's really not, but uh, once that comes apart, the rose just falls right out. Now, I am going to ink up my roses. I'm using Distress Oxide inks. I'm using Scattered Straw on the cream color, and I think that's Wilted Violet for the, uh, oh, Dusty Concord, for the uh, purple one. This is a completely unnecessary step, especially if you're using a patterned paper. Um, you could use a very light piece of cardstock for this as well. This is, again, Recollections cardstock. I did find that hot glue was the way to go when it comes to putting these together so that glue gun is heating up while I shape my roses. Now I'm going back to my foam mat and this is a shaping tool that I actually got in the cake decorator section at Hobby Lobby. But I will link something down below. I know Sizzix makes their own version of this, but I'm just using small circles all the way around the straight edge of the rose. And I'm just going in little tiny circles all the way around. You want it to start curling. It kind of gets a little annoying, but hang with it because it turns out so beautiful and it really was easy. So it kind of gets in your way when you're doing this step. So why do it? Well, because it actually makes the rolling of the flower that much easier because the flower fibers or the paper fibers are already loosened up and they will roll up nicely. Now there's also a key to rolling up the flowers that I found. You want to be rather on the loose side instead of on the tight side. The first few that I made, I made too tight. And um, well, flowers don't really look like that. You want them to be on the looser side. So here we go. We're gonna use a pair of reverse tweezers. These are scrapbook.coms. I would have been much better off with straight tweezers that are um, the kind that you squeeze to open. 
but uh, this is what I had, so this is what I used. Now, I've just grabbed the end and I'm just starting to roll. Twist, I'm trying to keep it straight on there, but it really doesn't matter if it gets a little boxy, you can kind of squish the flower together, but don't be too intentional with it. Just get her done. Uh, they come out better when you really don't think about it, honestly. Now, when you get to the end, you're gonna leave that little base you're not going to roll that part up. Hold your flower together between your index finger and your thumb. And you're going to go ahead and open up your tweezers and remove them. Add a little bit of glue to your silicone mat. That's where you're going to hold down the base. You want it to kind of stick. So I'm trying not to burn myself, but I was worrying for nothing, honestly. I'm gonna use the tweezers to tap it down, and then I'm gonna add some additional glue on the top part of the base of the flower, and I'm just gonna plunk that rose right on in there and give it a little hold so that the flower sets, and it's done. Super, super simple. Now this was the very first one that I did, and it came out great. Okay, I'm gonna show you one more. As I fight with this one to find the end, I put my tweezers on there and just roll and wrap and twist and keep rolling until I get to the base. I'm just trying to keep it so that the bottom of the paper is pretty level, but I really didn't think much about it. Add my little dollop of glue onto my silicone mat, plop the base on, Add another dollop on the top of the base of the flower and plunk that rose right in. Now, here's where you can add some additional ink. I'm adding some brushed corduroy or frayed burlap, I'm not sure which, to the top of my yellow, I'm trying to get rid of my hot glue strands. And, uh, well, oh, I guess I'm gonna switch over to some bundled sage now. And I'm just gonna go ahead and Give the top of those leaves some green. Eh, whatever. It doesn't really matter. You can do whatever you like with these little roses. They come out great no matter what. I have die cut the little frame out of holographic silver cardstock and I'm going to go ahead and glue that down with some Barely Arts Precision Craft glue because y'all know that's my favorite. I'm going to slap that baby down, put an acrylic block on top and uh, I used this little die. I didn't know what they were at first but they're little leaves and I also used the shaping tool on the little leaves and a little bit of ink around the edges and they're ready to go for the flowers as soon as that frame is set up. I did decide to go ahead and use hot glue to attach the flowers as well. It was a good call. Uh, I didn't have to hang on to everything and it set up really quickly. And I'm just going to put my flowers in the top right hand part of the frame for this one. Now I have die cut and shaped six little leaves and I've gone back to my precision crafts glue. Um, it doesn't take but a second to set up and I'm just gonna put some just on the edge. I don't cover the whole leaf, just on the part that's going underneath the flower. That way I don't mess up the shape that I just worked on. And I think I ultimately only use five leaves. I like the odd numbers, so that's what I went with. Now I'm going to use this Sweet Sentiment, which is part of my sentiment bundle that I have available for purchase. 
on my digital store. Now it was very important to me when I put this PDF together that all of the sentiments could be cut out with nothing more than a paper trimmer or a pair of scissors. You can certainly die cut them as I did this one, but it's not necessary. You can use a paper trimmer. They're all really easy to cut apart and it's very reasonably priced. I will list it down in the description box for you. And I'm going to finish decorating with some of the other beautiful little dies in this set, some butterflies and some flourishes. So a quick note about decorating the inside of your card. You want to make sure you know where your opening starts because you don't want to be decorating and that to be visible from the outside. And I did make that mistake with the very first card that I made. And I'm going to show that to you so that you don't make the same mistake that I did. It's easily fixable. I'm just going to slap some pattern paper in and put a new sentiment, but I want you to see it. So close the front of your card. Here's just a embellishment that I'm going to use and put a little tick mark at the base of your opening so you know not to go into that space when you're decorating. And I'm just using a happy birthday sentiment that I heat embossed with some silver embossing powder and I'm going ahead and gluing that in. Now you don't see that but look at how beautiful this card came out. This pop-up pivot card. Love it. Now here's the very first card that I made. You can see my stamped It's Your Day can be seen from the outside of the card. So easily fixable, but I wanted you to see that a pitfall can happen. Join us over at Facebook at Village Card and Crafts where you can show us just what you can do with all your crafty makes like this fun pop-up and pivot card. We'd love to see you over there. And don't forget, check out some other videos that I've picked out just for you. Until next time, we'll see you real soon.